Welcome to Raw Online. I am Dr. Venkata Krishnan, Professor of Medicine. We have to learn the importance of coronary artery disease and the ECG changes. For practice point of view and exam point of view, this is a must know topic. We have to know what is ischemia, what is MI, what is non ST elevation MI. We will make it as simple as possible and we can identify with the ECGs what is the ECG manifestation of coronary artery disease. This ECG for interpreting any CAD you should know CAD includes what either it is stable angina, unstable angina, n STEMI or STEMI. Out of this these three compose acute coronary syndrome. Stable angina does not come under acute coronary syndrome. What is the difference is stable angina there will be only chest pain angina on exertion when the patient is lying down or resting there will be not much symptoms. So, stable angina is the initial manifestation where it is not an advanced atherosclerosis, it is early manifestation of atherosclerosis and it has to be aggressively treated so that the patient does not go to the next pathophysiology. So, ECG, any ECG you start always start as a beginner, see the waves starting with whether the patient has see the rhythm, always look at the rhythm whether there are P waves all where, whether all P waves are followed by QRS complexes, yes, whether the RR is regular. So, here if you see P is normal, QRS is normal duration and RR is regular and the heart rate is approximately 60 per minute. It is 5 big boxes, 300 by 5 big boxes, it is approximately 60 per minute. Then you look for P wave abnormality, QRS, anything abnormal, ST segment. Here what is abnormal is the ST segment, especially 1, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. You can see AVL and V lead 1 is also affected. What is difference from lead 1 and other leads is here classically there is ST segment depression which is not seen in lead 1. That is ST segment depression. What is the next important thing comparing with one AVL and the T inversion. You can see there are deep T inversions. The T inversions can be like this or deep T inversions. Here it is deep T inversion, you can see deep T inversion C. So, in, when there is a deep T inversion, ST segment depression, definitely it is not ST elevation MI. There is a, either it is unstable angina or n STEMI. If it is stable angina, deep T inversion is not seen, there will be T inversion seen. And the next one is, see the AVR. Normally in AVR all the leads are, the complexes are negative, P is negative, QRS negative, T1. So, the clue to acute coronary syndrome, usually unstable angina or NSTEMI specifically, there will be upright T in, there will be a T which is upright in AVR to confirm it is NSTEMI, so which is not there. So, what is in this ECG? So, the learning point from this ECG is not all T inversions are angina, coronary artery disease. Here you can see the QRS morphology in lead to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 small boxes are there R, that is 25 millimeters of R. And the same thing V6 if you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 30 millimeters of R. So, there is LVH. LVH with the ST depression, left ventricular hypertrophy with ST depression, 
most probably there is a LVH with a strain pattern. Then what is the next clue? You can see usually in end stemming, what is seen is symmetrical deep T inversion. Here if you carefully observe, it is not symmetrical. Asymmetrical T deep T inversion. But by ECG alone, we cannot diagnose whether it is a coronary syndrome or not. History will definitely say if the patient presented with angina and other symptoms suggestive of, then you should say it is acute coronary syndrome, non-ST elevation MI, irrespective of the other features. Definitely there is left ventricular hypertrophy because the patient will be risk factors are hypertension, diabetes and others. So, any hypertension, diabetes, long-standing, not controlled other risk factors definitely will have a coronary artery disease. So, just hypertension alone you cannot say if the symptoms are there you can definitely say it is acute coronary syndrome not hard and fast rules. So, the next one we should know what is the primary T change and the secondary T change. Primary T change is what you get with any ischemia, any coronary artery disease T inversion is seen. That is primary T inversion, primary T change. In presence of bundle branch block, either it is RBVB or LBVB, the T is opposite to the QRS. You can see if T waves QRS is positive, T wave will be negative. That is called secondary T change. Why we should know is this patient, what it is having, what the patient is having. You can interpret basically see the ECG, it is very easy. So, you can see what is happening is abnormalities in lead 2, lead 3, AVF. So, it is showing T inversion. So, you should jump, you cannot, uh, you should say it is inferior wall ischemia. Again, any T inversion, definitely you have in V3. V2, V1. So, again T inversion in lead V1, V2, V3. So, there are inferior lead and anteroceptal leads. You should be very careful. Multiple leads, T inversion, something other than whether it is something other than coronary artery disease is associated. What is here you can see? M pattern and uh, uh, non-specific RSR pattern in lead V1. So, it is RBVB and you can see there is prominent height P wave in lead 